this guide, we'll go over everything you need to know as a fisher. This includes both how your stats and abilities work, and how to do different kinds of fishing, among other things. Now then, just like with combat jobs, you can also unlock and use all gatherers and crafters at once. Aside from some class specific armor like maybe a fishing straw hat, all three gatherers share armor and accessories. The only difference is the primary tool, the fishing rod and the spear fishing gig which there exists only one of and is unlocked through your job quest, do your job quests. For this reason, you may find it helpful to level up all three gatherers simultaneously so you don't have to lug around as much equipment. Speaking of equipment, what are the stats a gatherer, or more specifically, a fisher, uses? First, you may have noticed that when you equip a gathering class, your MP bar is replaced by a gathering points, or GP bar. This is the resource you spend to use your gathering abilities. Every 3 seconds, fishers recover 5 GP. This is gradually upgraded to 8 as you level up. The only other ways to recover GP is through either the ability Thaliac's Favor or by using Cordials, which are items that recover a large amount on a cooldown. Cordials exist as Watered Cordials, Regular Cordials, both crafted, and High Cordials. Regular Cordials can also be purchased for Grand Company Seals, while High Cordials can be bought for Scripts which are functionally like the crafter and gatherer equivalents to tombstones and are awarded for handing in collectible items in certain contexts. Watered and regular cordials can also be crafted as high quality, which both increases the amount of GP recovered and reduces the cooldown. Due to how most of your abilities as a fisher are extremely costly on GP, you might expect to not use much more than one or maybe two of these high cost abilities within several minutes. Hooksets are a different story however. Next, the gathering stat increases the chance when you have a fish on the hook that you will catch it. Unlike mining and botany, where the gathering chances are spelled out very clearly, with fishing, you may need to look up other people's results to know how much gathering is needed to consistently catch a specific fish. If you're trying to catch a fish in an area and you don't catch much, consider increasing your gathering stat. Finally, perception affects the size of fish you catch. For normal fishing, this translates to a chance to catch larger fish, which should not be confused with the difference between fish with weak or strong bites, or visually smaller or bigger fish when spearfishing. The identification of large fish is mainly significant for activating the trait Angler's Art, which is guaranteed when normally fishing, and only a chance when catching large fish when spearfishing. Additionally, when fishing collectible fish, Perception directly affects the collectability of the fish you catch. We will get back to this subject a bit later. Now, to explain how fishing works, we automatically touch on the 5 starting abilities of the fisher. First, you choose your bait using the aptly named bait ability. Then, when you are near a fishing spot, your cast ability is enabled. Using cast starts a fishing attempt. When your character flashes one or more exclamation marks over their head, use the hook ability to attempt to catch the fish. If you press too slow or your gathering stat is too low, you may fail. The quit ability is used to cancel a fishing attempt as well as quit fishing altogether, re-enabling movement. And cast light is an ability that allows you to more easily identify where the end of your fishing rod is which can be helpful to identify whether you just missed an exclamation mark. What is identified as a fishing spot is not very obvious, but typically it is a place with water and can be off cliffs. For example, you can fish in many parts of Limsa Luminsa. If you're looking for a specific fish or fishing spot, I do recommend looking it up to save yourself some time. Speaking of fishing spots, a large amount of the traits you will learn as a fisher involves unlocking new places to fish. Sand fishing, cloud fishing, cloud ear fishing, lava fishing, aether fishing, lake fishing and even space fishing. 
Naturally, these traits are more meant to let you know that you can in fact fish in these areas, as if you were too low level, you presumably would not be capable of catching anything in these areas, regardless of the trait or not. Next, the level 8 ability Sneak makes enemies up to 4 levels above you completely ignore your existence. At level 27, this ability is toggled automatically when you are a fisher. This means you can usually fish without worry anywhere you are meant to be. Now, this then leads us to the bread and butter of the large fish catching abilities. Patience, the hook sets and Thaliac's favor. While nothing really prevents you from just fishing normally by casting and hooking fish, making use of the ability Patience or Patience 2 which is learned much later, both adds a cost upkeep to fishing but also adds slightly more complexity to fishing. When you use Patience, you greatly increase the chance of fishing large fish which affects Thaliac's favor which I will get to shortly. However. Patience also greatly weakens the chance that you will catch fish with the regular hook ability. If you instead use one of the hook set abilities, which also cost GP, then this effect can be negated. The precision hook set only works on weak bites, which are indicated by a single exclamation mark, while the powerful hook set only works on strong bites, which are indicated by two exclamation marks. A 3 exclamation mark bite is called a ferocious bite and indicates a big fish is biting. These are special fish and I recommend looking up what hook set to use for these on a case by case basis. Now why would you want to fish larger fish? Whenever you catch a large fish, which is exactly the same as a regular fish in terms of inventory items, you gain a stack of the angler's art buff which you can hold up to 10 of. The most common way these stacks are going to be used are in Thaliac's favor, which spends 3 stacks to recover 150 GP, essentially making the hooks it casts free by refunding them. The main reason to use Patience and the hook sets are that, firstly, large fish give more experience when caught, and for certain aspects of fishing, namely collectibles, the size of the fish directly impacts the collectability. Of course, Big fish catch rates are also affected by patience if you decide to collect these. Finally, some fish can only be caught by first catching one kind of fish and then using that fish as bait. This is done with the mooch ability. For the regular variant of mooching, this must be a large fish. Mooch 2 and makeshift bait allows you to mooch regardless of the fish size, however, one costs GP and has a cooldown, while the other costs 5 Angler's Art stacks. The high level ability Prize Catch can also impact this by forcing your next catch to be large. However, as this ability negates your current mooching opportunity, this is not possible if you're fishing something that requires a mooching chain meaning mooching a fish you caught by mooching. Moving on, you have a large selection of other abilities to impact your fishing opportunities. Let's talk about those. Release and Release List allows you to get rid of a fish you just caught and further add it to a blacklist for your current fishing period, meaning the list is cleared when you put away your fishing rod. This is mainly helpful if you're hard pressed for inventory space. Snagging is a toggled ability that adds some particular items to the list of things you can catch. This is still affected by the list of fish or objects in the fishing location. Typically, you will enable this when fishing for something specific that requires it. Surface slab and identical cast are opposites of each other. Surface slab allows you to guarantee that the next fish you catch is different from the fish you just had while Identical Cast guarantees that the next fish you catch will be the same fish. Chum reduces the time it will take for your next catch, which may be helpful if you're trying to cram a lot of catches of a time-specific fish before it leaves. Speaking of which, Fish Eyes is an extremely costly ability that briefly allows you to ignore weather and time-specific conditions, which can be super helpful if you need a super specific regular fish for some project, like a culinarian recipe. Take note that fish eyes does not work on big fish with special conditions like these. Finally, double hook and triple hook doubles or triples the amount of fish you catch on your next fishing attempt or sometimes even increases it by more. 
Now, a useful aspect to know about phishing attempts is that all buffs that are applied to you when you begin a phishing attempt will stay active until the phishing attempt finishes. This means that if you begin a phishing attempt with 5 seconds left on the patience buff, it will last for the full phishing attempt. This also applies to food buffs and the like. Another thing to keep in mind regarding phishing attempts is that if you begin a phishing attempt and your character flat out gives up after a little while, it can mean that the phishing bait you have chosen is incompatible with the phishing location you have chosen. Make sure to either bring a large variety of bait to try or look up the phishing area you plan to visit before you go. A completely different kind of phishing is unlocked at level 61 by doing your phishing class questline. This is called spear phishing. Alongside unlocking this feature, it also gives you the spear fishing gig, which is a unique piece of equipment that gives you 35 extra GP. There are no other spear fishing gigs in the game. This is the one and only, so don't worry about upgrading it. In a small handful of zones, also found in the fishing log, you can find spear fishing locations. By activating the Fathom ability, these are marked on your map, similarly to how botany or mining nodes are marked on the minimap for these classes. Similarly, you also gain access to Shark Eye 1 and 2, which locate the nearest and highest level spearfishing location in the area around you. When you interact with a spearfishing node, a minigame commences. To jab your spear forward in the screen, use the Gig ability. Each fish you hit in their weak spot, indicated by the targeting reticle on each fish, you catch. Fish that sparkle are guaranteed to be large, while all other fish have a chance to be large, based on your perception. Spearfishing large fish only has a chance to grant angler's art, rather than it being guaranteed. As the minigame progresses, the wariness bar increases. When it is completely filled, the game ends abruptly. Every use of gig also increases the wariness by a bit. The catch counter in the top left of the menu increases with each fish you catch and resets if the circle completely empties. The higher your catch counter, the slower the wariness meter will increase. The aim is of course to catch as many fish in as few gigs as possible without waiting too long. To help you, you again have a handful of abilities exclusive to spear fishing. Salvage is a toggled ability that gives you a chance to spearfish treasure maps if you prefer to collect these which do have a daily cooldown period through spearfishing. Vital Sight is an angler's art spending ability that widens the targeting reticles for all fish for the entirety of the current minigame for a cost of 2 angler's art. Combining this with Thaliac's favor and bringing plenty of angler's art to a single minigame can net you a very nice haul of fish. Baited Breath allows you to lower the wariness bar somewhat, as long as it is not past the line on the right side of the bar. Nature's Bounty is the spearfishing equivalent to Price Catch, although it only increases the chance of large fish for 1 gig. Similarly, Veteran Trade is the spearfishing equivalent of Surface Slap, completely removing the most recent fish you caught from the pool of fish for the rest of the minigame. Finally, Electric Current allows you to reset your catch counter and immediately catch all fish currently on the screen, which can be a great explosive finish just before the timer runs out. Truth of the Ocean is an ability you learn in connection with spearfishing, and the way it works is that when you catch a certain number of a specific spearfishing target, a special node will appear on your minimap. These nodes tend to have at least one very valuable collectible fish, so if you are spearfishing in one of these kinds of areas that can result in such a node, saving your GP and Angler's art for them is a great idea. Now, regarding collectibles. By completing the quest Inscrutable Tastes at level 50 in Ishgard, you unlock access to collectibles. This is accessed by activating the new toggled ability Collect. While this is active, fish that can be useful as collectibles will offer themselves as collectibles when you catch them. Additionally, their size will directly impact their collectability. You can also catch collectible fish while spearfishing. Collectibles are unique versions of items that now have a collectability rating, deciding how valuable the item is. You can make use of collectibles either by handing specific ones in at a custom delivery NPC, a sort of weekly side quest project. Some collectible fish can instead be handed to the collectible appraisers in exchange for XP and gatherer scripts. 
For fishing collectibles, the collectability rating expectations for both custom deliveries and appraisers can vary heavily depending on the fish, as the rating is directly related with the actual size of the fish, meaning naturally smaller fish have a smaller chance of being relatively large, but also that the size required to be worth anything or score the maximum payout is reduced significantly to match. When going out to catch collectible fish, it is important to take note of the collectability range worth going for, especially for custom deliveries since you can only hand in 6 per week per NPC or a maximum of 12. Remember that the patience abilities heavily boost the average collectability rating when fishing. For spear fishing, it is more a matter of having enough perception and simply catching a lot and then appraising the fish that you can use. If you catch a collectible fish that is not of interest to custom deliveries or appraisers, they can sometimes be useful for ethereal reduction. This is unlocked by doing the quest No Longer a Collectible, and allows you to turn certain collectibles into types of ether sand. Higher collectability increases the amount of ether sand you can expect to get. Usually, fish used for ethereal reduction have no other purpose than this. Now, that covers most of the things you need to know for fishing. Before we finish, let's take a look at some leveling strategies followed by some max level suggestions. Due to how your class questline is required to unlock the spear fishing system, I heavily advise you to do this as your primary leveling focus. When these are not available, either because the next one is out of reach, or because you finished the last one at level 70, there are a handful of other options. Leaf quests can be repeatedly done for a decent amount of XP, just mind that there's a daily allowance combined with a massive 100 maximum allowance limit, so the allowance can sneak up on you. Every day, your grand company will request some items delivered, and this gives an enormous amount of XP. Custom deliveries, which I mentioned previously, gives a large amount of XP per hand in, alongside some scripts. For Shadowbringers and Endwalker, there are also story quest lines that give a large portion of XP. The Fisher uniquely has one for just them. You can also simply fish anywhere that is near your level range, either regular fishing or spear fishing when that is unlocked. Spear fishing should be particularly good for this due to the very reliable amounts of XP you get while going from node to node. If you choose which places to spearfish wisely, you can even be lucky and snag some collectibles to hand in to the appraiser for extra XP. Aside from these options, you can also choose to go to the Diadem in the Firmament of Ishgard and fish there instead. However, I cannot say for certain whether this method is better or worse than spearfishing. Finally, you can also go Ocean Fishing, which can be unlocked at level 1 through the All the Fish in the Sea quest. Every even-numbered hour, server time, a voyage takes off from Limsalomensa's lower decks. To participate, speak with Drisk Thota when the invitation opens. There is a 15-minute window to sign up. This is like an alliance raid of sorts, just for fishing, and has a lot of complex mechanics to maximize your score, which can be relevant if you want things like a mount or other rewards. However, this is far too involved for a general fishing guide, so I advise you to look this up separately if you are interested. What is important is that ocean fishing has shown to be one of, if not the absolutely fastest leveling method for any job in the game, allowing players to reach max level with fishing within just a couple of days. Your main concern when entering should be looking into what bait you will need for the location the ocean fishing takes place, as this changes. Now, once you reach max level, if you want to optimize your fishing, make sure to get your equipment fully melded. I have a separate guide on materia if you want to know more about how that works. The important part is that melded gear produces more materia faster, and the more materia you have melded into the gear, the faster this is. Overmelding allows you to put up to 5 materia into crafted gear. With particularly strong gear, you can catch high collectability fish much more easily, which in turn can grant you more scripts faster, which can purchase more materia or other scripts exclusive items to sell. Another target would be to go out and find every big fish in the game to finish this separate project. These are particularly rare fish that mainly serve as difficult fishing projects but have no use outside of this. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found it helpful or inspiring, please consider liking the video.
You can also subscribe to get notified when next I post a video. If you have any questions or anything to add, please do leave a comment down below. Fun fact, before Endwalker, spearfishing was functionally similar to mining and botany in that you had gathering attempts on nodes. However, you simply had to press the gig button at specific visual timings. You could also choose different gig heads to adjust what fish you would catch.